you know, Elton, not, not a lot makes him blush. So, you know, <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's very at peace with us telling the story in that way. <laughs> What was your feeling to all of you at the end of the screening? Taron, you were like mm. crying. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, let's stop talking about it. I got a bit emotional. Um, it was one of the best days of my life. Uh, we have, we've, we've, we've worked really hard to, to, to try and make something that we're all really proud of. And um, it's not your typical biopic. Uh, we don't deal with the songs in a chronological order. There's elements of fantasy. We take some license with the truth. In the interest of full disclosure, people did not float off the ground at the Troubadour. Um, uh, Are you sure? <laughs> you know, um, and, and the response has been so wonderful. And uh, for me personally, thank you so much to everyone that said nice things. Um, you've made a young man from Aberystwyth incredibly happy. And, and you've made a 72-year-old rock star even more happy. So thank you so much. We have this enormous privilege in, in being able to celebrate Bernie and Elton while they're alive and well and performing. And, mm -hmm. and after the movie last night, the fact that, that Elton performed afterwards and performed with Taryn. I mean, this is, this is a privilege because normally when you're telling the story of someone's life, uh, they're gone. You know, mm -hmm. and and there was none of that loss. It was only celebration at the end. It's a celebration that that doesn't mean that we've sought to deify Elton or or make him flawless or perfect. We we wanted to tell us to tell a human story. Elton is an extraordinary human being, but he's still a human being, and um, and so you, that's why you see the troughs as well as the peaks. Yeah, he was always very clear from the beginning, and when when you first. When I first read the script and when we first started discussing it, he, he, he's very clear that he didn't want it to be self-serving. There's, no, there's no upside for him in that, and he's always been very clear and honest and open about who he is. And the film uh, attempts to reflect that and be a part of that as well. I could hear the whole tune in my head. It was all there. I could see all the notes, and I just had to get it out. It's a little bit funny This feeling inside What did you say your name was again? My name is... Reggie! Reginald Dwight. Reginald. That's my granddad's name. Yeah, I love that song. It's one of the most beautiful songs ever written. And it was... As, uh, it was... Uh, I can't believe it. I'm going to go again. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> So I chose that song to audition for drama school because um, Bernie Torpin is a, a poet and a storyteller and lots of, the, <laughs> <laughs> lots of these songs are written like stories so you can remove the music and they work as addresses, as speeches, as character pieces. And when you're auditioning for acting course, you want a song that you can act through. And it occurred to me at the age of 17 that your song was a song you could uh, act and perform like you were talking to someone. When you saw this year at the Academy Awards, Rami Malek, you know, taking the Oscar for playing Freddie Mercury, did you picture yourself with that award? And if you win... That's a horrible you give... question. Yeah. <laughs> It's a I'm not going to tell me that you didn't. One thing I would like to say and take this opportunity to say is that inevitably the film has drawn comparisons with Bohemian Rhapsody. Rami Malek's performance in that movie is astonishing. And I'm lucky enough to know him a little bit personally. Dexter knows him quite well. He's the nicest, most brilliant man and, and, and one of the most talented actors of, of our generation. And I'm very, very proud that we are mentioned in the same breath. I'm going to ignore the part of your question <laughs> that, I, that there is no good answer to. Um, but, uh, it's a trap. It's a trap. You know, that, that film it has been such a global phenomenon and success, and rightly so. It is a great rip-roaring piece of entertainment, and it's great fun. I can't remember who did that and who finished it off. Actually. Can't <laughs> I? Uh, <laughs> very good. Very good. <sighs> 
But our movie is a different animal. Our movie is a musical, so it requires an actor that can sing in the lead role. For a biopic, that's not necessary because it's a biopic and they're just performance pieces that are singing. So um, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very grateful that people compare us and hopefully it shows that there is an appetite for movies of this nature. And um, however, that movie is a unicorn and I don't want to be forever judged. <laughs> anyway, Rocket Man is really good. <laughs> Rocket Man is, we're very proud of Rocket Man. We're very and proud of Rocket Any Man. questions you have about Rocket Man, <laughs> we are more than happy to answer in full. I just want to add something there, which is that, um, I mean, we're all aware that the industry uh, is, is changing rapidly. And with TV being so, and streaming services being so robust and wonderful, honestly, uh, us in the movie business really need to think about leveling up. And we, we know now what it takes to get people to the theater. It takes a giant spectacle, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, we, don't, we don't drive to the theater, buy a ticket, get popcorn, wait for it to start, watch through the previews for something you could watch at home. You go to the theater for an experience and something memorable and something shared. And, and so, you know, of course, stories, like stories of musicians with music, you know, that is, that brings that spectacle, you know, and, and, it, and it, it, um, it kind of demands that united experience. It would be a shame mm -hmm. to watch this movie alone by yourself. Honestly, it really would. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so that's why I think there is a huge appetite. Bryce is answering all the questions from now on. <laughs> People don't pay to see Reg Dwight. They pay to see Elton John. Sorry. I know. <laughs>